Hello, this is Dr. Amin Marashi, retina specialist at Marashi Eye Clinic, Aleppo, Syria. This presentation is about fluorescein angiography features for diabetic retinopathy and macular edema. As the previous presentation, which discussed the OCT features for diabetic macular edema. Please click on the annotation above to view the previous presentation. As we discussed in the previous presentation, OCT is a tool to evaluate the structural changes of the macular tissue induced by metabolic changes because of diabetes. Fluorescein angiography is a tool to study perfusion status of the macula and the retinal periphery. At the first visit, ordering fluorescein angiography, especially when the best corrected visual acuity is approximately 2020, is important because it will help us to document the presence of leaking microaneurysms that matches clinically significant macular edema as defined by the ETDRS, as the measurement of visual acuity alone is insufficient sensitive tool to detect diabetic macular edema. However, OCT is the gold standard to rule out the presence of macular thickening. Fundus fluorescein angiography can be ordered as a guide for locating leaking microaneurysms and in planning to do focal laser especially in cases with non-central macular edema to maintain good vision for approximately 18 weeks in cases of good glycemic and blood pressure control. Ordering fluorescein angiography at the first visit is mandatory in cases of featureless retina with very poor best corrected visual acuity to exclude ischemic maculopathy because these patients have poor prognosis and there is no beneficial treatment as OCT alone cannot detect ischemia and uh, it may show only evidence of ganglion cell layer damage. Here is an example of 55 years old patient presented with hypertension, diabetes, and poor best corrected visual acuity of counting fingers, which has diabetic retinopathy and maculopathy as seen in the right fundus photograph, which shows featureless retina with ghost vessels cotton wool spots, and intraretinal hemorrhages, which are signs of ischemia. As seen in the fluorescein angiogram in the left, there is enlarged foveal avascular zone with capillary dropouts, and the, those are signs of ischemic maculopathy. Fluorescein angiogram shows retinal neovascularization, which was subtle in the fundus photograph, in addition to peripheral retinal hypoperfusion. This patient requires pan retinal laser photocoagulation. However, visual prognosis is poor. Here is an example of a patient with diabetes, 55 years old, who has best corrected visual acuity 2020. And when examining his uh, fundus photograph, we can see a minimal non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy with some microaneurysms that in the macular area. In the left picture, which is a fluorescein angiogram, we can see a leaking microaneurysms that matches the criteria of clinically significant macular edema. In this particular patient, adding focal uh, laser photocalculation to this leaking microaneurysms may preserve vision for 18 weeks. Fluorescein angiography is a standard method to study the retinal perfusion and ordering it will help us to document ischemic changes, which are presented as hypofluorescence due to capillary dropout, whether it is in the macula or in the retinal periphery. Ischemic maculopathy indicates a poor prognosis with no beneficial treatment. Such cases can be presented on angiogram as enlarged or irregular borders of foveal avascular zone as seen in the previous example. The presence of significant non-perfusion of the retinal periphery is a prognostic factor for proliferative diabetic retinopathy development, which requires pan-retinal laser photocoagulation. Placing laser burns in non-perfused areas of the retinal periphery when treating proliferative diabetic retinopathy is recommended to preserve the visual field as much as possible, especially in patients with compromised visual fits, such as those with glaucoma. Fluorescein angiography is a good ancillary test to detect the presence of intraretinal micro 
vascular abnormalities or new vascularization when it is subtle in routine dilated fundus exam. Here is an example of 43 years old patient with diabetes based corrected visual acuity is 2025 as seen on fundus photograph in the right that features signs of non proliferative diabetic retinopathy with microaneurysms and hard exudates. Where in the panoramic fluorescein angiogram in the left we can see two areas of hyperfluorescence. One at the macula, which resembles leaking microaneurysms that matches clinically significant macular edema, and the second is in the bottom of the angiogram, which resembles retinal neovascularization. And next to the neovascularization, there is a, another prominent feature of this angiogram, which is hypofluorescence, and thus resemble hypoperfusion due to capillary dropout causing peripheral ischemia. At this patient requires panretinal photocalculation in addition to focal laser leaking microaneurysms. Fluorescein angiography can detect microaneurysms and ordering it will help us to document their leakage and location as they presented as hyperfluorescent spots at the beginning. Then as hyperfluorescence due to microaneurysms. When ordering fluorescein angiography to evaluate diabetic macular edema, we should look for the following. First, clinically significant macular edema, which presented in protein fundus examination as any edema within 500 microns of the center of the fovea, hard exudates when within 500 microns of the center of the fovea adjacent to the edema or one disc diameter of edema within one disc diameter of the center of the fovea. In this case, ordering fluorescein angiography can rule out leaking microaneurysms that matches clinically significant macular edema. However, OCT is essential to rule out central fovea thickening. Fluorescein angiography can tell us about location of the leakage, whether the edema is non-central as seen in the previous examples, and if it meets the criteria of clinically significant macular edema, or central involvement of leaking microorganism inside foveal avascular zone. This is important to decide whether it's, it would be safe or dangerous to treat with uh, to treat the eye with continuous wave laser photocalculation or whether to switch to micropulse mode wave laser photocalculation in cases of non-central edemas. However, in cases of central edemas, vascular endoth uh, endothelial growth factor blockade agents or intravitreal steroids are warranted. Here is an example of 60 years old patient with diabetes. Best corrected visual acuity is 2035, as seen on fundus photograph in the right that features signs of non proliferative diabetic retinopathy with microaneurysms and hard exudates that does not meet the criteria of clinically significant macular edema. Where in fluorescein angiogram in the left, we can see two areas of hyperfluorescence which resemble leaking microaneurysms one near to the foveal avascular zone that matches clinically significant macular edema, macular edema and the second is in the upper arcade resemble leaking microaneurysms that does not match clinically significant macular edema. However, it is recommended to do OCT for this patient to rule out central macular thickening and if presented in OCT then treatment should be carried out with intravitreal uh, vascular endothelial growth factor blockade agents. And if central macular thickening is not presented, then observation with glycemic control is recommended as hyperfluorescence that is in the upper arcade that resemble leaking microaneurysms does not match the criteria of clinically significant macular edema. Fluorescein angiography can tell us about the type of the macular edema, whether the edema is diffuse or focal. This is important to decide whether to do modified or focal laser. Below is an example of 68 years old patient with diabetes, best corrected visual acuity is 2030. As seen on fundus photograph in the right, 
that features signs of non proliferative diabetic retinopathy with microaneurysms and hard exudate. Where in the left, fluorescein angiogram can be seen with diffuse areas of hyperfluorescence at the macula, which resemble leaking microaneurysms with foveal involvement. However, it is recommended to do OCT for this patient to rule out central macular thickening, and if presented in OCT, then treatment should be carried out with intravitreal vascular endothelial growth factor blockade agents, and if central macular thickening is not presented, then modified grade laser is recommended along with with glycemic control. It is important to correlate the angiogram and fundus exam. For example, when a serous innate lipid ring is presented on fundus examination, it may present as a cluster of leaking microaneurysms on angiography, while zones of intraretinal microvascular abnormalities may be highlighted as capillary non-perfusion. We shouldn't be mistaken hyperfluorescence on angiogram due to window defect because of RPE atrophy or old laser treatment with leaking microaneurysms and thus can be avoided by careful fundus examination and history collection. However, OCD can be very handful in such cases to rule out central macular thickening. Below is an example of 52 years old patient with diabetes. Best corrected visual acuity is 2200, as seen on fundus photograph in the right that features signs of non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy with serocinate lipid ring and cluster of leaking microaneurysms where in the fluorescein angiogram in the left we can see diffuse areas of hyperfluorescence due to uh, leaking microaneurysms with macular involvement and areas of adjacent hypofluorescence due to capillary dropout. However, it is recommended to do OCT for this patient to rule out central macular thickening. And if presented in OCT, then treatment should be carried out with intravitreal vascular injection endothelial growth factor blockade agents with focal laser along with glycemic control. Here is an example of 69 years old patient with diabetes best corrected visual acuity is 2050 which has been treated with a great laser as seen on Pandas photograph that features signs of non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy with microaneurysms and retinal pigment epithelium changes. Where in the fluorescein angiogram, we can see diffuse areas of hyperfluorescence, which resemble retinal pigment epithelial atrophy. However, in this late phase angiogram for the same patient, we can see hyperfluorescence, but there is no leak. OCT is done for this patient and cross-sectional OCT rule out central macular thickening as seen. It is recommended for this patient to do only glycemic and blood pressure control. Here is another example of 54 years old patient with diabetes. Best corrected visual acuity is 2080. As seen on fundus photograph features signs of non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy with serocinate lipid rings and cluster of microaneurysms. Where in the fluorescein angiogram, we can see diffuse areas of hyperfluorescent spots, which resemble microaneurysms. In this late phase, we can see hyperfluorescence with foveal involvement due to leaking microaneurysms. OC2 for this patient shows central macular thickening with cystic formation. Treatment should be carried out with intravitreal uh, vascular endothelial growth factor blockade agents and with focal laser along with glycemic control. Besides studying the posterior pole perfusion of the retina, fluorescein angiography can be wide field module that study the widest field of view with one shot image. Modalities range from 20 degrees up to 200 degrees. Can be ordered to exclude peripheral ischemia, which is an early sign of proliferative diabetic retinopathy. That requires laser treatment and can be used as a guide for laser treatment to preserve the visual fields as much as possible. Here is an example of ultra-wide field fluorescein angiogram 
for a 45 years old patient with diabetes type 1 and best corrected visual acuity is 2030 in this particular patient as seen in the angiogram we have hyperfluorescence which resemble neovascularization on the optic disc and elsewhere in the retina and hypoperfusion due to capillary dropout in the retinal periphery. This patient requires panretinal laser photocalculation as a treatment. At the end, fluorescein angiography is a powerful tool to study re retinal and macular perfusion in patients with diabetic retinopathy and maculopathy, and thus can be presented as hyper or hypofluorescence. When hypofluorescence is presented at the macula as enlarged or irregular foveal avascular zone, it is an indicator of ischemic maculopathy, which hold poor prognosis. And when hypofluorescence is presented in the retinal periphery due to capillary dropout, is a prognostic factor for proliferative diabetic retinopathy and require treatment with pan laser photocalculation. While hyperfluorescence at the macula presents leak from microaneurysms that may require treatment with focal laser photocoagulation in cases of non-central macular edema, while leaks with foveal involvement may require intravitreal injection of vascular endothelial growth factor blockade agents after confirming central macular thickening with OCT. However, peripheral retinal hyperfluorescence may be highlighted as neovascularization in early stages of angiogram or intraretinal microvascular abnormalities in late stages. Treatment with pan laser photocoagulation is required in cases of proliferative diabetic retinopathy. In clinical practice, fluorescein angiogram can be ordered to rule out ischemic maculopathy in cases of poor visual acuity and featureless retina. Fluorescein angiogram can be a guide for focal laser treatment to le leaking microaneurysm. Fluorescein angiography can be handful to reveal neovascularization and intraretinal microvascular abnormalities when it is subtle in routine dilated fundus exam, while wide field or panoramic fluorescein angiograms can be used as a guide for for laser burns placement in areas of hypoperfusion to preserve visual fields. I hope you find this presentation is useful for your daily practice. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe to this channel for more videos and check the other videos too. Please visit my website retinal assistant module www.amretina.tk which is an online tool to help categorize and triage the management of diabetic retinopathy and retinal vein occlusion which offers ophthalmologist automated management recommendations.